Oh, I didn't see you there. Welcome in. I've been waiting so long to film this video. Now join us as, as we, we savor, savor the, the flavors, flavors and the aromas of, of the, the 18th, 18th century. Hey everybody, this is Dylan. And this is Reeves. I have been wanting to do this video for so long, but I cannot guarantee any historical accuracy. Even the outfits was just kind of like a really good guess. I mean, I know I like my outfit and my uh, apron here, but. The first one that I picked out is called an onion pie. Pie is spelled P-Y-E. I liked this recipe because it had onions and apples and potatoes in it, and I was like, what the heck kind of combo is that? Is that gonna be any good? And I picked them out of the book, Primitive Cookery or the Kitchen Garden Displayed. This is actually a vegetarian cookbook, but there is a little butter and eggs that they sneak around and we're just gonna kind of like skim over that part and pretend it doesn't exist. The other thing about these recipes that I thought was so funny is they are so Dylan style because they're like throwing some seasonings and a handful of this and whatever, it's done. And there's like barely any instruction. Great, we're gonna do just fine. <laughs> it might be tasty, there's only one way to find out. The first step says to wash and pare some potatoes. So does pear mean peel? I think pear must mean peel. I'm gonna just go ahead and get started peeling a few potatoes. I don't know that they would have had this tool for this job, but we're cheating a little bit. The potatoes are pared. Shall I? <laughs> Pear, anything else? Now you have to cut them into slices, peel some onions, cut them into slices, pare some apples, and slice them. It's time to peel and slice an onion, per Rebecca's directions. These are ages old directions. Knife is a little different, but other than that, I think we're good. We need to stretch these slices out. And you want me to do the apples too? It does say to pare and slice them. I don't know why you would need to pare them. Paring means to remove the outer skin, does it not? Yeah, I guess we should. I'm again using the paring tool that we invented a little bit later than this cookbook. Dill, I love your apron. Thank you. Every time I've ever made an onion pie, I've just been real lax about my peeling. But when have you made an onion pie? This has been carried down for generations, <laughs> so. Do you think it's gonna be good, potatoes and apples? Uh, yeah, I don't see why not. Without the good, good crust, I just don't know for but, sure. Well, I definitely dropped the ball on the good crust part. When they just say, make a good crust, <laughs> yeah, that's what am say. I going to do with this? Make a good crust, cover your dish. What does that mean? And then it says, close your pie. I assume that's put some foil over it. I think that means put the top of the crust. Oh, the crust more, that think, we're not doing? Yeah, I'm starting to get worried now. <laughs> so now we need to continue prepping the apples. I'm just gonna cut it down the middle and we'll get the seeds, the core and seeds out like that. I wanna know how thin to make these slices. How long, how far do I need to extend this potato? Are we gonna make a couple of layers? Lay a layer of potatoes, a layer of onions, a layer of apples until you have filled your pie. Ah, we get to repeat. Strewing a little of the seasoning between each layer. Ah, simple enough. So it's just basically like a layered casserole. That's right. Okay, here we go. First layer, everybody. Catch it while it's hot. This is us layering in our dish. Dill, just strew them about, you know? Okay, just strew, it said just strew them in an unorganized fashion? <laughs> yeah. So let's get our nutmeg going. What do you say? Can you read me the language again on the nutmeg? A nutmeg grated. A nutmeg grated. Oh wait, do we do the whole layer first? I've been doing the uh, apples and everything. Oh, I didn't slice the apples. Let's get on that apple slicing. <laughs> okay, here's a little bit of apple. Potato, then onion, potato, then apple. I'll lay a layer of potatoes, a layer of onions. Onions and next. And then a layer of apples. Onions next. Now the apples. Yeah, I'm gonna do it a little organized, God forbid. A little order in the 18th century. You can strew them about in an orderly fashion. This is one complete layer. Take a quarter ounce of mace and beat it fine. What is mace? Maybe mace is nutritional yeast. Have you considered that? Oh, I think you're onto something. Do you I think, think maybe mace is nooch? Yeah, for sure. Now we have a little 18th century mace. <laughs> 
little bit of mace going in. This is our nutmeg grated. And some, what was the word for the pepper? Battered pepper, what was it? A teaspoon of beaten pepper. Beaten pepper. So really beat that pepper in. Really beat it in there. Still, it smells so good. We don't use nutmeg enough. Why is it only a Christmas spice? They used to nutmeg everything. That was like a verb for them. You know what I love about the Townsend's YouTube channel is everything at the end when John Townsend tastes it, he's like, wow, that's so good. I have and, no idea. And we're like, are you sure? It was just like flour and water. Okay, here's the 18th century mace. Okay, there's Well Your World mace. Do you think mace is also well your world's salt substitute? Stardust? <laughs> Grating nutmeg makes me nervous. Beat and pepper. Beat that pepper. Okay, last layer we've had just a little bit. Do you think there's room for it? Oh yeah, we've got just a little bit of potato here. Just gonna finish this dish off. I did dig through the historical reference and I did find in a couple places where mace could be nooch but could also be Well Your World Stardust Salt Substitute. So I am going to just cover my bases and use a little bit of both, just in case. Wow. A little bit of that mace. And then a little bit of, also this is mace. And then we got that beaten pepper, and then a little bit of that nutmeg grated. We gotta get that, those spoonfuls of water in. And six spoonfuls of water. The recipe used the word teaspoons, but then they, for the water, it said spoonfuls. So I'm gonna assume that's a tablespoon. Do you agree? Sure. One, two. The only part of the recipe that was really specific. Three, four, five, six. A little bit of the mace got washed off, so I'm gonna re-add a little bit of mace. <laughs> okay. And then we are going to apply, what was it? A good crust. This is literally unfindable, I would think, in the 18th century, so I would consider it a pretty good crust at that time. Best crust of the time period. The, the inedible crust. Would have crust. been almost unattainable. That good crust held up. That good crust. Onion mm -hmm. pie. It smells good. It smells great. There we go, a delicious onion pie. So we have apples and onions and potatoes. Good enough for me. Really? I would get full on this. Would I save the leftovers? Not sure. I actually love this. Wow. I love this, but you know what I would do different? I think I'd put some acidity into it, like half a lemon or some apple cider vinegar. Okay, it's interesting. I absolutely love this. I think it's such a cool combo. We hope you have enjoyed this visit to the 18th century. I think the takeaway from this is to wing recipes. Just, Just to wing it. Mm -hmm. Season it how you like. Pair this, beat that. Thank you for joining us as we savor the, the flavors, flavors and the aromas of the, of the 18th, 18th century. century.